I have all my bearings in for my drill press so we can start getting this thing back together again. I called up Action Bearing over here in Brighton and they were able to uh, help me out and they had all the bearings pretty much in stock and they knew exactly what I was talking about with these uh, new departure bearings. Um, if you take apart any kind of older piece of equipment, more than likely you're going to find a new departure bearing in there. And what they are are felt sealed bearings and a lot of them have extended inner races. So they're kind of hard to find. You can find new old stock but they charge you an arm and a leg. So anyway, I called Action, gave them um, the three different size numbers that I have, which was uh, 88016, 88505, and this, this one here for the high speed pulley was 77503. So what that ended up doing is uh, this one here just crossed to a regular 6203ZZ shielded bearing, and these are the two uh, felt sealed bearings which go in the quill and uh, the, the the pulley bearings. So these ones he, we're, oh, these ones here are the replacements for this one. These are made by uh, KSK out in Japan. Pretty sure these all come from Japan. I, these actually might be American. 88016. These were the most expensive out of the bunch and you'll see that they're a little bit different than a regular bearing. Uh, I don't know if you can s tell on camera, you can see it has the extended inner race. So these are a little bit harder to find, even though the thing is much smaller. This was pretty much twice the price of that. And these the, are actually Japan. I'm pretty sure these are all Japanese bearings. This is this is NTN on it, even though it's a federal mogul. It's probably a distributor, but the uh, those are NTN. And these ones here, are uh, Nachi in there, also Japanese bearings. So this one is this, this one is those that we haven't gotten out yet, and these here are that. So I have to get this out now. I obviously, I don't have a spanner or anything. I can't drill holes in anything, at least not relatively straight because my drill press is down. But what I did find is a hinge that happens to be the exact same width as that slot. So I just cut it to fit right in there. And we should hopefully be able to grab this in the, the three jaw chuck on my lathe and use that kind of as a vise and get these off. I have already cleaned I haven't cleaned that side up, but I've cleared, cleaned that side up and got all the gunk out of there, sprayed some penetrating oil on there. So we'll see if we can get these suckers off on the, over on the lake. Okay, so I got you here in my nifty little, little camera mount. So I'm going to grab this in the three jaw. I'm going to make sure not to grab on these, uh, these notches here. And I'm just going to give her a snug. Do have the back gear locked, not really a good thing to do, but uh, I'm assuming that these aren't going to be on ridiculously tight, but who knows. So let me grab my little hinge, hinge, and fits in there nice. I give it a little bit of clearance to not drag it up against the threads, and I'm going to see if we can Yep, there it is. There's one. There's a bearing in there. Now I never, like I said, I never, I had never taken these out when I did the rebuild, so you can see about you know thirty years worth of oil in there. Ooh, that one's stuck. Come on. Yeah. 
There it is. And there's the other one. All right. So now I just have to press those out of that spindle there. And there's a, um, a bearing on each end and then a tube inside, I believe. Unless that is part of the whole casting, I'm not sure. I may be relieved. I may just be pressed in. Uh, we'll, we'll see. We'll see how we can get these out. All right, we were able to get these bearings out pretty easily, and there was a uh, connecting tube between them, just like everything else. Uh, so what I was able to do, actually, is um, they didn't seem to be in there ridiculously hard. I was able to just uh, tap on one, and the other one actually popped off, then flip it around and use a long punch and uh, pop that other one out. So now those are out. I'm just going to degrease everything. This is a, a lot of old oil and gook in here. Um, so I'm just going to clean this all up and then I'm going to press on all the new bearings and uh, then we'll put it back together again. I'm not going to show you pressing in the bearings because obviously you've seen something like that before and we're going to just do it the opposite way that everything came apart. Um, the one thing I didn't show you was getting the bearings off of this. I did, I was able to get a um, I was able to grab the bearings and punch the um, the shaft out with a uh, a punch. I did nick a thread on it. That was my stupidity. I should have actually cut in a uh, uh, something to fit inside here. Plus, th these were sharp threads on the top. This this was cut perfectly flat. There was never any uh, any bevel or lead into those threads. So that's why that ended up getting nicked on the end. So all I did was chuck it up in the lathe real quick and just take a file and make a bevel on the edge and then you know this fits perfectly high on there fine now uh, this is all left hand thread so that's that so these two larger bearings go on this shaft with this spacer in between and there's also a backing spacer in between them um, there's another little ring that goes inside here uh, these two smaller bearings here go on into this spindle with this tube in between and then these two small guys here go in the high speed pulley and that's about it so let me get all these bearings in place and uh, we'll stop putting the machine back together all right we got everything back together again here's the uh the pulley um the, the drive pulley bearings you got the shaft pressed back in here. The only thing you have to worry about with this, that tube in between both bearings is free floating, so you have to get it lined up. Um, so all I did was uh, punched this bearing in, put the rod in, punched it in. Oh, sorry, I punched this bearing in, put the the collar on it, the uh, the the spanner nut, tighten that one up, put the uh, rod in, punched this one in. And then using the splined end, which is just clearance for that hole, I lined up that rod. And then tighten this nut to preload your bearings. You can't crank it too tight, otherwise you freeze your bearings. You want a nice, obviously, be able to spin it pretty easily. So those are nice and smooth. Um, and then this is the high-speed pulley, which is actually an option. So your drill press may or may not have these. And... Um, I've kind of narrowed it down to two bearings that were uh, probably making the noise. The ones in the drive pulley aren't that bad. This one and the other one aren't too bad. They got a little bit of a of a hiss, but it sounds more like just old grease, more so than a bad bearing. Um, this one here, which went in the high speed spindle pulley, and this one here, which was on the spindle itself. These were the bad bearings. Um, I don't know if you can hear that. I don't know if you hear that compared to 
that one, which makes barely any noise. So let's set up over on the drill press again, and we'll get all these together, and we'll see if we're a lot quieter. Okay, we're back over here at the drill press. We're ready to put everything together. Uh, the one thing I didn't show you is got to put that lock collar back on there uh, on the spindle. So what we're going to do first is we're going to drop our pulley bearings in place here. I'm just trying to line up the little screw marks. These screws bear on this ring, so it should just go in by hand. Get everything in line here. Okay. Now I don't want to tighten these up yet because there's a little bit of wiggle in it. And these splines have to mesh with that. So I actually want to put this spindle in first um, and get the splines all set in case I got to wiggle this a little bit. So what I want to do first is I'm going to get a little bit of uh, just a little bit of grease and put it on these splines here. Uh, that'll take care of any any noise or anything or any rattle that you have in this. This machine's pretty tight. I actually didn't have any grease on it before, but just a little light um, light grease on that or even even an oil should help. Okay, we got just a small coat of grease on there, nothing huge. I have the depth stop uh, in there. It's loose, but um, it's in there. So we're going to put this spindle in. And I'll throw a little bit of oil on this after the fact to get everything all set in place here. So I'm going to get this guy in here. Gonna line up the splines. There we go. Make sure everything's in there nice. Everything's lined up. Um, stay. Get our Allen in here. And I can sight through this one and make sure that I'm bearing on the uh, that little notch in the ring. Okay, I'm going to plug quill handle in. Okay. All I'm doing right now is sighting this, make sure that this pin is in the middle of this notch and make sure that this casting is, um, or that the, the actual quill barrel is below the end of this casting. So that's pretty good there. Tighten this down. And it helps if I have the so I have the correct size. What are you doing? Shelly, what are you doing, nosy? Hey, kitten. Just sitting at the door waiting for you. <laughs> Just looking at the door. 
Hey, kitty. Are you recording that? Yes, maybe. Say hi. <laughs> Welcome, I love you. We'll be back and watch some Sunday with you. <laughs> <laughs> Me and Jelly will be upstairs when we're ready. Alright. I hope you can edit all that verbiage out. I what? I said I hope you can edit all that by talking out. Ah, I edit nothing. Oh. Alright, now that I got the correct wrench, just tighten up this. Dead stop here. All right, we're nice and smooth. And right now, what I'm gonna do is set the little friction stop here. It's actually it's keyed. It's actually keyed on the bottom. Oh, it's got a little slot that's got to fit into. There it is. And Now that shoe is basically what gives you a little bit of resistance on the uh, the spring tension. So what I'll do is I'll I'll fine tune that and adjust that once I get everything together with the spring. Um, but for right now, what I want to do is take a little bit of. light oil let's put a little bit on there you don't need a whole lot just not for a nice little film So now, I'm going to set my return spring. So. Give it a couple of winds, hold it in. A little bit tighter than that. Up. That's it right there, holds the quill up completely to the top. So now I'm going to pop the nut on the side here.
Now you can't, you want this on there just tight enough so that the, the coil spring bracket won't back off its stock, but you can't overly tighten this because that's connected to the quill. If you overly tighten it, it's going to uh, bind itself. So you need it a relatively loose fit. Okay. And then that's what the jam nuts for. The jam nuts actually to hold that nut from spinning off. So put that on there. It has a nice feel to it. Now, you can see when I let go, this thing spins really fast up. Okay, so to counteract that is what this is for. So the tighter you get that, the slower it will retract up. So you just want a comfortable little medium here. Turn off of this spring. I think right now it's just <clears throat> fine tuning everything to the way you want everything to feel. pretty good. I like the way that feels. So tighten the jam nut. Yeah, that feels good. Tighten the jam nut. Tighten the lock screw. Okay, so now we got all that stuff in place. What we want to do is put this pulley back on. Now you can see there are two, oh, let's see if you can see it. There are two dimples or holes in the shaft there. That's where the set screws go. So what I'm going to do is just take one set screw completely out of the pulley. And you can see the tip of the set screw has a little notch to fit that. So I'm going to line this up by eyeball here. Actually, I'm pretty damn close. Let's give it a little nudge to the side. Right there. Alright, so tighten these in. on the top. Lock none on the top of that.
Oh, yeah, that's right. It's a left hand nut. There you go. <laughs> Forgot about that. Never mind. Okay, so that's nice and tight. And it's gonna pop the center pulley in, put the belts on, put the guide on, and then we can start this up. Okay, all is well. Um, somebody came in here and put that pulley on backwards, so I may have had to flip it the right way around. Um, I know that this is actually this handle here for the multi-speed. Uh, attachment is supposed to be on this side here, um, but it interferes with the the handle. Uh, and whoever had it before me had already notched the uh, the guard, so I just leave it on this side. Um, I don't have it on the on its highest speed right now. I do have to adjust these bearings in here a little bit. I may have put this title uh, a little too tight. Um, plus the bearings may have to just wear themselves in just a little bit. And I don't know how long those were sitting on a shelf or something. Um, but it, it just, I mean, it, it spins up, but it bogs down just slightly. Um, so I just need to probably loosen up that um, screw a little bit in there, the uh, the spanner nut, and uh, just uh, put a little bit of less pressure on those bearings, and we should be fine. But it does uh, spin up on this speed, and it, it's quiet. The, the noisiest part is actually the belts squeaking. Quill down, so we're good to go. Uh, plus, I think actually, yeah, this belt. No, well, not that belt. This belt's a little. I have this belt a little too tight, so I could be bogging it down a little bit too. Um, plus, I can see right now that I'm rubbing on the bottom of this belt. This is cocked a little bit this way, so I just got to um, get this plate a little bit more. Straight, so just just a little bit of adjustments here and there, nothing big. Um, but with all the bearings are in, everything's nice. Everything's nice and quiet. Um, there's no, I mean, we're not heating up on anything. We're not heating up on that. We're not heating up on the any of the pulleys here, except for where the belt rides. Uh, so drill press is complete. So this weekend I have another little lathe project, which I know some of you guys will find interesting. Um, so if you guys stick around, we'll get to that this weekend. Thanks for watching this video, and we'll see you on the next one.